Hi everyone, Paul ISM. Welcome to part two of our Tamiya Porsche 124. Now, blah, blah, blah. Hey everyone, Paul ISM. Welcome to part two of our 124 Tamiya Porsche 911 GT3 video build. First part, we dealt with all the bodywork. Second part today, we're going to deal with the chassis, engine. There's a part of an engine in there, the running gear, brakes, suspension, and the wheels as well. I'll get all that assembled in preparation for part three, which will be our interior, which is going to take quite a bit of work with some new products as well so it's going to be very very interesting a lot of footage today eight hours again down to 37 minutes whatever the heck it was um so we're kicking all the important points and throwing away all that but not much crap that we don't need to see basically <laughs> so we're straight to the point we've skipped through some bits that don't need showing uh and try to focus on the more important points so there we are so let's jump straight in Get cracking Make with sure it. you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the little bell notifications to get notified of all our latest videos. Click the like button and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all the comments and appreciate everybody that takes the time to leave a comment on the channel. And of course, if you scroll up in the description, there's a link to a big long list of all the items I use in my videos. So if you see anything, you should be able to find it in there. Right then, so straight in with our wheels. Now, I debated stripping these and spraying them and doing them a different colour, maybe going gold, etc, etc. Couldn't find the gold I like, test sprayed a few spoons, wasn't happy with the look and decided, right, the finish on these wheels is pretty decent from Tamiya. Let's leave them as is, but chuck a wash on them, let it dry, wipe it off, see what they look like and go from there. So the first part, as you can see here, we've got a Tamiya panel line wash, the enamel wash. Uh, we're going to pop it in all the recesses and panel lines and all those little nooks and crannies. Let it dry. I'm going to come back and wipe off in a bit. We've got Tamiya side cutters. We're going to get all our suspension components off. Now, beauty of this kit, part of the reason I chose it, it's a very, very simple kit. There's about 15 components for the suspension and running gear. About the same for the interior. Very, very low part count kit. So we're just going to get all the parts off. I'm leaving this little front splitter on the sprue for now. So I'm just cutting off the surrounding trees to keep it protected and pop that back in the box. And then we'll just go through and cut off all the parts we need. Now bear in mind, not all these parts are required. I think the originality of this kit is the Carrera, which is a pretty hard kit to get, judging by that front bumper. So we don't need all the parts. So refer to your instructions on what you need. So once you got all the bits off the sprue that you need, we use our Tamiya cutters to cut closer to the part, get as close as we can with our side cutters. Decent side cutters are allowed to do this without damaging the part. Um, so get rid of most of the plastic that you can. Then come in with your sander of choice, which for me is our ultimate modeling sanders. So I've got a 400 customizable cutter shape, followed up by a 220 thinny sponge, followed up by our buffer, and then we spin it round, polish it up, and job done. Nice straight edge on the chassis easily cleaned up so go around systematically make sure everything's cleaned up if you're not happy with it hit it again repeat the process and uh, keep going until you're happy everything's cleaned up now pick your weapon wisely um, so on the brake calipers on top we use the customizable 400 first then we use the uh, thinny sponged 220 to keep the shape of the caliper so we don't flat everything off and just work through our part. We were literally just talking about this last night in a hangout. It's a boring part of modeling. It really is. You can spend hours cleaning up parts. The Hasegawa 037 we just finished, uh, there was about four hours of cleanup, five hours of cleanup and that. And it does get monotonous and boring. But just think that the more time you spend, the better it's going to look. Um, and it will improve the model. Uh, it will. Uh, no end, because everything's clean. There's nothing worse than looking at a beautiful model. And you look close and there's a seam line or rejection mark. And I'm guilty of it too. It does happen. But yeah, take your time and you're all good. 
Right, suspension components on the spring. We've got a seam right through the middle. So we've got a Tamiya extra thin. So we're going to load it up. We've got them held on our lovely UMP glue holder. So it's going to load up the spring, let the glue melt the seam line, and then brush through it with our brush to get rid of that awkward seam line, which would be a pain in the backside to sand, and then repeat that on the other side. Leave it for a couple of minutes to soften up a bit, and then hit it again, and it will get rid of that seam line beautifully for you. So we'll repeat that on all four suspension struts. Now the wheels, these are dry for a good half hour. We've got some Santador odorless mineral spirits on a cotton bud. And we're just going to go around and remove all the wash. All we want to do is leave the wash in all our recesses and raised areas. And add a bit of depth to the wheel. And take away a bit of that kind of fake look of the chrome. So they're looking good so far. Um, I've been very hard pushed to beat this finish with a paint. So we're definitely going to keep these I think. Again, a bit of an awkward job to do, so get some of the pointed Tamiya or Mr. Hobby cotton buds to help you. And once it's all cleaned up, we'll have a closer look. So we'll zoom in a bit and have a look. And yeah, they look really good to me. I'd be hard pushed to beat that finish with paint. So now we've added a wash, it adds a little bit of depth to the wheel, and I'm happy with that. Chassis. Now, we should have painted this along with the body, but we didn't. But we've got our UMP uh, grey primer. We're going to spray this at 25 PSI through the 0.35 mil apex several light coats getting all those angles and corners just to get a nice even coat this is going to be painted the same color the body was the ultraviolet purple from gravity colors spain like i say we should have done this with the body work but i can't like to keep it separate because um it's part of the chassis and i like to do everything like this together a bit weird like that but it's just the way i work so we get nice even covers, leave that in a warm room, 20 plus degrees in my room most of the time. We'll leave that overnight, 12 hours, come back the next day. And we can now get the base colour down. We've got UMP black primer now. Same 0.3 mil, well 0.35 mil needle, 25 psi. Several light coats on all the parts to get them primed up, ready for paint. So take your time, light coats to start with, you can build it up as you go. We'll just take your time, get the coats built up, and you would be good to go. Plenty of components, but not overwhelming. There's a, a good few, but a lot less than things like the Hasegawa kit we did, where there was a whole engine in there. So it's a little bit easier to work with, and a lot faster as well. So several like coats, get those done again, leave them overnight. The exhaust, one of the trickiest parts of the D-seam on this kit, and one that you'll notice the seams on the most, in my opinion. So, we're taking our time there, make sure everything's cleaned up. We get a slight blockage on your airbrush, just give it a full pull back and blow through. Clear the blockage. Oh, a little bit, oh, we're out of, we're out of primer. We're not blocked, we're out of primer. So, we'll load it up again, and finish the rest off. So, next day now. We've got our Gravity Colors Ultraviolet paint. Got the end of the bottle. It used quite a lot of this bottle to paint that car. And we're going to be left with a little bit at the end. But we're going to make sure we get nice even coats on this. I did contemplate doing it in black with the texture paint like we did on a few of the other cars. For a thought on this one, we'll do it the body color. So nice light coats building it up. We're at 18 PSI, we've got the 0.35 Apex. I have separate airbrushes for all the different types of paints from lacquer, primer, metallics, UMP primer, uh, 2K. And we've got a detail one for our lacquer as well. So again, to make sure you go to those recesses and the different areas and angles. We've got to detail paint this in a bit as well, but we want to make sure we get everywhere covered that needs covering. So, several light passes over later. I think I had about four coats, five coats maybe. We've got a nice bit of depth to the paint. Obviously, this is barely going to be seen. Very rarely will underneath the car be seen. But you guys can see it because I'm video building. And it's it's nice to get the money's worth out of your model, in my opinion. You pay for the kit. You might as well do the best you can. And like I said at the beginning of the year, that was my goal this year. And hopefully it will improve my model. Well, modelling and my models in general. 
and I think the time spent is well worth it. So there we go, we've got some nice depth of colour there. It's a beautiful colour, lovely paint from Gravity. We've even got a little bit of paint left behind. So we've got Tamiya LP5, Sammy Gloss Black, one of my favourite colours. Spray these 18 PSI, thinner of 40% paint, 60% thinner, and the throw to my Apex 0.35 needle at 18 PSI. Several light coats, let it dry in between coats. All the parts necessary are on that one part stand. I've separated the metallic from the black parts to make things a little bit easier for myself. And just apply several light coats, getting all the angles. The lacquer paints are unbelievably forgiving. I don't like some of the car based paints. You don't need to be as critical in doing your light coats. You're not going to get really real risk of craze into the plastic. But in my own experience, the LPs don't like to go down as wet as the TS sprays. So bear that in mind and don't hose the paint on. Now, for our exhaust, I've gone for a mix of this W Super Metallic, titanium and gold. It's, it's a more silver than gold colour, so basically it just gives a hint of gold to give kind of a titanium gold effect. So several light coats. This is thinned about 60% with Mr. Hobby level and thinner. We're through the apex, uh, 0.2 mil needle, 18 psi. A couple of light coats over the top. They cover really well, these paints. They are beautiful. And this little mix is a stunning colour. You can just see the slight gold hue to it. And as a first, we're going to weather up the exhaust a bit as well with a little bit of painting and a wash. But just make sure you get it all evenly covered once you're happy with this one side to dry. We've got Tammy LP38 for our 0.2 mil 18 psi apex. Again, thin these about 60% thinner to paint. Thinned with the normal Tammy lacquer thinner, not the retarder. So it dries a bit quicker, we get a much nicer metallic finish. Several light passes on all these parts. This is a flat al aluminium or aluminium. It's definitely aluminium. Flat aluminium colour as a base for these. And some of these parts can need masking off and spray different colours as well. So bear that in mind. There we go. We've got Tamiya LP11, which is just a silver. Thin exactly the same through the same airbrush. 0.2 mil, 18 psi apex. And we're going to do this on our brake discs. We'll deal with the calipers later on. But again, several light coats. Once you build the coats up, you see the metallic particles really start to self-level and give a nice sheen. You can see the coverage is phenomenal. One of my favourite paints these. I love the LP paints. And I think they will start replacing my AK Extremes. Purely because the lacquers dry a lot quicker, the AK Extremes being enamel, stay tacky, and they're a bit awkward to work with. So that is my goal. Right, so the wheels, we're happy with these now. I've left them for a day just to keep looking at and see what I think, and yeah, I'm happy with the colour, they look really good. So we're going to paint the road wheel nuts. So we've got some Tamiya, I think it's LP61. Metallic grey. On a cocktail stick toothpick, I'm just going to dab, load up the toothpick end and dab it onto the road wheel nut. This is a subjective choice because on the real car, these were probably bright silver. But if you do that, you can't see them. Doing this adds a little bit of depth and a bit of interest. So that's why I tend to do it. Um, again, it's personal choice. Whichever way you want to do it is the right way at the end of the day. There is no wrong way of doing this. And then we've got a Porsche logo for the center of each one just taken off as usual using our tamiya decal tweezers pop them in the water for 10 15 seconds take them out let them sit for a minute grab them pop them on remove the excess water and then we can come in and hit them with ump decal solutions and get them set in place so there we go pretty straightforward and that's basically our wheels done now we need to mask off our brake calipers we've got our display circle cutter and we're going to cut out uh, a circle that's roughly the same size as the hub in the center of the brake disc using Tamiya 18mm tape. Once we've got the circle cut out, we we'll grab our metal ruler and our Tamiya modeling knife. 
cut the edge. Nice fresh blade in there as well. As you can see, if we do that, we can then place it over the hub. And it should roughly fit into the caliper as well. If it doesn't, infill with a little bit of thin, say, 2 mil Tamiya tape, Azu tape, whatever you've got. But this is a quick, effective way of masking the calipers. And if you measure just right, you won't need any infill. And you get it absolutely perfect. Now, you could spray the hub at the same time. I thought I'll hand paint them later for ease. So that's what we did. So just get it all lined up, get the majority of the disc masked off, and then we can mask up the center hub section just by popping a bit of tape in between the caliper and the hub and running it around, pinching the top, and that's ready for paint. Caliper color. Now, I saw several pictures of these with gold wheels and yellow calipers on the purple ultraviolet color, and the yellow looked really good. So we decided to go with yellow. Um, I actually don't know if I show spraying it. I think I actually cut the footage out. But it was basically just several light coats to build the color up over the silver. Nice and slow. It's a nice glossy finish on the Mr. Hobby, uh, Mr. Color GX Ranger paints, which we'll show in a little bit. Uh, I think it'd be a nice color to show between the purple and the silver wheel. We've also masked up some of the uh, running gear as well. We've got the drive shafts here. Um, I did intentionally mask these off to spray them. And I thought, really, this isn't worth spraying. So we've got some uh, NATO Black LP. Let me have a little look for you. I think it's 54. No, it's not. I'm still looking. Bear with me. Stand by. I can't see the paint. NATO Black LP 60. There we go. So, yeah, NATO Black helps you to get a bit of a difference between the LP5 Black. It's only very subtle. Barely worth doing, to be honest. But you know it's there. You know it's been done. And that's probably the most important thing of all. So, we sprayed our springs. We sprayed these in silver originally. We're taking some Tamiya 10mm tape. Over the silver, we painted the springs red. We used GX, I think it's 3 red to spray those nice gloss red we're then going to mask those up and paint the springs and the struts and the colors they need i'm just checking the discs through the wheels and there we go there's our yellow calipers mr color gx4 very nice that's been drying overnight got a nice glossy yellow we've got our brembo caliper decals now these are aftermarket parts i had I thought, we'll pop them on. I haven't got any Porsche logos, sadly. So this is uh, operated or, I don't know, are Brembo operated compared to Porsche calipers? I have no idea. But we did it for a bit of interest. So we stuck a small Brembo uh, brake logo on there, pop them in place, get it set, remove the excess water, and again, we'll hit it with UMP decal solutions once we're happy. So get it all lined up, double check. Once you're happy, if you're not, move it again. Once you are, get rid of the excess water behind. Grab your decal solution of choice, which for me is UMP uh, Strong. Quick wipe over, leave it be, let it dry. And that is the calipers painted and decaled. We then got our center hub as well, which again, we did in the LP61 uh, metallic gray. Brush painted on with a Tamiya flat brush. Nice simple job, but easier than masking. For something that can't really be seen anyway, in all honesty, when the wheel's on. This is the thing you've got to think of. Is it worth masking all this to never, ever see it again? It's different if you're going to maybe pick the car up and show somebody. Parts underneath you may see, but this will never, ever be seen through the wheel. Now, we need to paint some areas of the chassis in black and silver. I did sit here and start to mask it, and then I thought, you know what, I really couldn't be bothered spending hours masking this when I could hand paint it in minutes. So I started to line up the 6mm Tamiya tape in our UMP tape holder, and then thought, yeah, nah, let's just brush paint it. So I whipped off the masking tape, Tamiya flat brush, Mr. Colour Black, thin little drop of water. 
brush it on. We can grab a moist cotton bud. I didn't lick that then, by the way, at all. We can grab a moist cotton bud, wipe off any excess where it needs to go. And it's a lot quicker and easier. It really is so much quicker. So you can get a decent finish with this as long as you do paint properly. Keep your coats thin. Don't keep going over the paint. Decent paintbrush. Keep the demarcation well between the colours. And it'll look okay. So we did the chassis. We've got a moist and pointed cotton bud now. Wiping off any excess. There you go. All the major components underneath are painted black. Were required. Now we've got the engine. And I did brush paint the engine. And in hindsight, I kind of wished I'd masked it to get a slightly better finish. We used the uh, Mr. Sorry, not Mr. Model Air from Vallejo. Silver. Thinned with a drop of water again. Slight, same um, Tamiya flat brush. I'm just going to carefully paint it all. But I really do wish on the engine I had airbrushed it. Just to get a slightly better finish. With all the angles and recesses, it's easy to get the paint to pool. Um, this isn't as forgiving as the black. So, yeah, I think I'd rather have masked this if I was to do it again. There we go. A couple of coats later. We're there. And I'm just putting the last coat on. Getting all nice and smooth. We'll weather it up a touch as well. But, yeah, in hindsight, I should have definitely masked it. It would have got a better finish. And would have definitely looked a little bit better. Just look at the Porsche references online. See what needs paint in a different colour. But there we go. We're all done. So in the spray booth. Our suspension components we masked up earlier. We've got LP5. Uh, through the point three five needle nozzle apex. 18 PSI. 60% thinner to paint. A couple of light coats to get the coverage. And then mask off the strut. And spray the bottom part of the hub in flat aluminium again. We've got some LP5 for our interior. We're spraying this while we're here. This is going to need flocking. I sadly have no grey embossing powder. I do have grey flock. So that's the way we're going to go. There was carpet included with the kit. I've tried it. It doesn't fit in there great or look good. And it only lets you carpet the back section of the car. So we're going to flock the whole thing from front to back in par 3. Right, so weather up these exhausts. We've got some Alkalad Sepia through the 0.2 mil Apex 18 PSI. So this is one of their transparent paints, sepia colour. We're using the 0.2 mil needle nozzle Apex, lower PSI. I think I even knocked it down a bit more to about 14 PSI. And we're just going to add some staining to the exhaust. We're not going to go absolutely mental. We're just going to add it to areas that may be subject to higher heats or corners, manifolds, junctions, and what have you. Just add a little bit of depth to the exhaust. Again, this is your own interpretation. And ideally, there's no real right way or wrong way to do this. It's just your eye, what you think. But there's a little trick you can do if you go too far. So as you can see, there's a little bit of stain in here and there. Make sure the airbrush is clear. Both blow it through every now and then. We're using low pressure, trying to get a bit of detail paint here. The apex is very, very versatile with the different needle sets in. And with the 0.2 mil needle set, it is capable of doing some pretty fine work. Obviously not as fine as a Sotar or a, a Custom Micron from uh, Iwater, etc. But it can do some pretty decent work. Got some transparent smoke now from Alclad as well. I've got a little bit of darker staining to the exhaust in and around the same areas. Give it a really, really good shake. Again, we're through the apex. 18 psi. To be honest, it's probably about 14 psi. I did knock it down a little bit. And again, this this is your own interpretation of how it should look. So it's easy to go too far, and if you do, follow this little step in a minute, you can blend it all back into a little bit less obtrusive. Is that the right word to use? Make it a bit more subtle. Because if we left it like this, you may think, oh, it looks really good. To me, it looks a bit over the top. It's a bit too much staining on there. So what we'll do is we'll grab the colour we used originally, which is the Mr. Hobby Titanium mixed with a bit of the gold. 
and we're thin to the touch more. The level and thinner, and we're just misting it over the top. Ever so slightly, having a look for any high wear areas or high areas that are a little bit too much. Using the light angle in it, looking when we're happy, we can go and do the other one, and that'll just blend all the colours together. Tamiya panel line wash again, the enamel wash from Tamiya, fantastic weathering wash in all our calipers. There are drilled sections to the brake disc. You could drill them if you want. In my experience on the cars, they always look a bit odd if you drill it out by hand. So I think it's much better to put a wash in there. I think it gives a much better effect. And then we can also do our exhaust as well. And this will add some real depth and realism, hopefully. Hopefully you agree at the end, it looks good. So we just touch anywhere that's got a recessed area or a raised section, anything basically that will hold or wash corners everywhere. And then we'll let it dry for half hour or so, wipe off the excess, leaving the weathered areas still with washing. So just go around nice and gentle. Don't flood the wash on. We don't want to be absolutely caking it in wash. We use the purpose-built brush just to apply it gently where we want it. As you can see, I've got awful little recessed and raised areas. I'm just filling them with wash. Let's dry down for half an hour. We've got a little bit of Sansador from Winsor Newton, odorless mineral spirits on a cotton bud, and we'll gently wipe over, removing the excess wash. And that, combined with the heat staining, will give us a nice weathered look exhaust. Take your time, don't rub too hard because you can rub through the paint. Oh, just showed off a new kit I got there as well. And the same with the discs as well. Come in, remove the excess wash. Be careful of your decals you popped on earlier. It might be better to actually wait and pop them on after you put your wash on because it's easy to drag off the unprotected decals. Rather the wash to the engine and the running gear, um, sorry, not the running gear, the uh, chassis is the word I'm looking for. Underneath, that's dried. We're just wiping off the excess. And then we've masked off our suspension strut where it was sprayed black. And now we're coming with the X, sorry, X, LP, um, is it 31, 38, flat aluminium? 38 it is. To spray the bottom part of our hubs. Couple of light coats. Through the apex, 0.2 mil, 18 psi. And there we go, a bit of tricky masking, but time well spent. Now we've got some of the sepia uh, from Alclad. Got a little bit of weather into the engine. We'll try another bit of depth to it. So we're through the 0.2 mil apex. Now I've got the smoke. It's had a bit more in other places as well. Just some careful weather. You can really go to town and weather underneath here. But we're just going to start with a few basic, just simple steps. There you go. Once you're happy, put it to one side to dry. And there we go. We can unmask our suspension components now. So a bit fiddly these. Time well spent though, because they do look pretty decent. So unmask everything gently. And once you've unmasked them, we can add a wash. Do our final little bit of detail painting. We need to do a little bit of silver at the top and the bottom of the spring supports. Trying to find the end of the tape is a bit tricky sometimes, but persevere, you will get it. And there we go. So, got a bit of the Vallejo silver again, model there. A little dab on our UMP paint pot. We've got a Windsor and Newton. Oh, we'll throw it. A Windsor Newton brush now, Series 7. I think it's a zero. I'm just going to add the detail hand painted in to the top of the suspension component. So, yeah, we've got a nice bit of detail painting here, a nice bit of mask work. All we need to do then is pop a wash in amongst the springs, let that dry, wipe it off. We've got a pretty decent looking suspension component. Sadly, especially the front one, it can't be seen. It vanishes in the underneath of the car. 
But you see me do it. I know it's there. You guys know it's there. At the end of the day, like I said before, we pay for this model. Might as well get the full experience out of building it. Whether you can see it or not, you know it's there. It'll improve your technique on parts that can be seen. So, it's debatable. Is it time well spent? That's a hard one to say, but I did promise it's going to take more time, detail, and parts, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We've got a Loctite Perfect Pen on our cocktail stick, and we're going to start assembling our suspension, running gear, subframes, everything on the chassis. So some careful gluing, referring to our instructions, make sure we get everything the right way around. A bit tricky in places. Very high tolerances on the part fitments on this kit. They literally the parts do click in place. So top marks for this one, Tamiya. Make sure you get the right parts in the right place. Refer to those instructions. Make sure everything looks correct. You don't want to stick it in and have to try and get the part out. It's a nightmare. So double check the instructions. And just a little dab of glue. You don't need a lot of super glue, CA glue at all. Just a couple of dabs in the hole where it's going. Grab the part, double check it's facing the right way, like so. You can see me looking, yeah, it's that way. Checking in, double checking in. You see, this is what I mean, take your time. Pop it in place, and then push it home. Make sure it's all straight. You see, it doesn't need the word persuasion to get in place. Very, very high tolerances on these par fit. Then get our drive shafts in place. These are a two part piece that you have to pop through. A little dab of glue in the middle, join them together. It can't be seen underneath, but it's in half so you can slot it through each side. We're going to line them up with our tweezers, like so. Pop it down with our finger as tight as we can. And there we go. So, a bit of wash to remove from the uh, springs. So, doing this will either wash in the spring, but then show our nice glossy red spring that we sprayed earlier. And that suspension component is all painted and ready to go. I'm not bleeding now. I've actually got just got paint on me. Absolute nightmare. Some of the paints are difficult to remove from skin. And there we go. Now, come on closer look, you can see how easy the wash comes off. And the effect it gives. So you can still see the wash in amongst the center of the spring. But obviously the actual spring itself then shows through on the nice bright red that we did. And take your time, don't be too aggressive. You can remove paint if you're not careful. So don't be pressing too hard. Once you're happy, get the right disc and caliper combinations. These are marked on the back. We've got a little bit of yellow overspray. So we've got a bit of the uh, Vallejo model color silver on a micro brush just to touch them up on the back. And this isn't a, a part that'd be highly visible, but we've just done it as part of building the kit. Pop it on. Why am I using a micro brush? Because I don't have to clean it. I can just throw it away. Dab of glue. We've got all our poly caps inserted in the discs. The discs are marked one each disc. Sorry, one disc of each side is marked with the part number. So get that one. Match it to the other one because they have different locating points on the back. And then you know the right way around. They are orientated. Dab of CA glue. Pop it in place. Push it home. Rinse and repeat for the other three. And that is those done. CA glue is a subjective choice again. I like the deluxe materials and this perfect pen. I like the perfect pen because of the viscosity of the CA glue. It's nice and thick, grabs the part well. And it's a nice, strong, reliable CA glue. And it's in a very nice applicator as well. So we're popping our suspension in. The rear section's all done. Just a case of following the instructions, nothing technical at all. 
It's a case of popping things in the hole, dabbing glue, popping something else on top, pushing it home. But like I said, the tolerances on this kit are really tight. I think you get away with glue on a lot of it, to be honest. Because even when they are all lined up, they still take a good push to get the parts to click into place. So very, very positive. It's actually a really nice kit, this from Tamiya. You can see using the back end with pliers, uh, pliers, tweezers, to push it home. And let's get a very positive click off each one. And there we go. We've got our working steering. Yellow calibers looking fantastic against the purple. And now we can get our exhaust in place. Now, these are tricky. Refer to instructions. The right-hand side section goes under the left-hand side and over it. So you've got to try and get them both in there together at the same time. It's a bit tricky. It's actually pretty simple to do. So what I did was just line everything up. Have a look how we can do it. I was thinking, can I just pop it underneath? And no, I can't. So we're going to have to try and do these together in one go. So if we get one side on, <laughs> you need about three hands to do this. So I've got one side on and underneath. And then we pushed it down that side. Then we'll pop the other side over the top and push that home. We can then start to push the larger sizes down like so. There we go. And then the other sides in place. Click them home. And there we go. Exhaust look great. So there's our calipers. If then detail paints underneath. Bit of weather to the exhaust. Happy with that. It's come out quite well. It's had a bit of depth. We're going to add a bit more to the engine itself, but hey, it is what it is. And there we go. I couldn't resist a test fit of the body. It sits pretty well. They could be lowered a mil or so on the back and the front. But to be honest, I think we're quite happy how it's looking. We've got some nice chrome tailpipes to add to the exhaust. Because all the fingerprints on the body, this all still needs to be flattened and polished. But I think those yellow calipers, silver wheels, purple paint... They really go well together. Okay, there we go then. That's uh, that's all our running gear done. Suspension, wheels, all ready to go. As you can see, a quick test for the body. It's going to look nice, this, once it's done. It could do as low as maybe a mil or two on the front and back, but it doesn't look bad. And it's true to the road car as well. The road car sits pretty much like that. So I think we'll leave it be. But we don't know until we get the interior in how it's truly going to sit. But I think it'll be roughly... How I show it there. The purple once polished up is going to look amazing. Um, and hopefully the interior. We can do something a bit interesting with a new product next time. Uh, which hopefully will be up midweek. Maybe after the weekend. I'm flying through this in a minute. Really enjoying this build. So we're getting the parts out a bit quicker than I thought. Um, so yeah. Hopefully I'll get a new part very soon. And then part 4 would just be final assembly. And getting it all finished and then starting on the first in 11 days is it we've got our f1 build starting which sneak peek you've already seen it probably we're going to build that the uh, lotus 78 79 uh martini f1 car I've got detail upset for the paint from gravity for it so hopefully that'll be an interesting build and i'm quite eager to start that one and then I think once that one's done, we're going to commit and jump to the 12 scale skyline. I've got everything done now, including a beautiful 3D printed exhaust from my buddy Dan. And some NOS bottles, nitrous oxide bottles, and a few little extras to add there. So I'm going to drop my exhaust, two secs. Don't want to drop your exhaust. Make a terrible noise and smell. Couldn't resist that, sorry. Um, so yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's the plan. F1 car, nice video build on that. I don't know how many parts that's going to be. Um, I think it'll be a few though. And then as soon as that's done, I'm, I think I'm going to commit. I'm going to jump straight into doing the uh, the Skyline. I really do want to get that Skyline done. But I also want to take part in a lot of the group builds as well. So there we go. There you go for bulky buff. So there we go. There we go. Um, so yeah, part three, I hope we'll go pretty soon. Got any comments or questions? Pop them down below. Um, I am enjoying reading all your comments. A lot of positive feedback on this build. 
and the past few builds have got a lot more views than normal so i'm obviously picking subjects that you guys and girls out there are enjoying i say guys and girls um according to youtube 100 percent of my viewers are male and they're all 50 45 to 55 most of my viewers are with 35 to 45 and 55 to 65 just on the outside and most of you are british and american so there we go google uh well youtube analytics showing who's watching i know we do get some female views but for some reason youtube's not showing them over it's too much of a a lower percentage it doesn't show but it should do really it really should there we go a bit of a tangent of a waffle there but anyway there we go so as always check out Intasa scale model facebook page and forum umpretail.com we can get nearly all the products i show in my videos um, there's a link in the description down below to a big list of products of everything i use it is in there and there's a link to everything i'm about to mention UMP retail.com i have a facebook page and forum the live of the bench page for the live show off air hangout group for the off air hangouts um the international scale model group build page my Paul ism and instagram page as well so head down there and have a look make sure you sub to the channel give us a thumbs up and leave a comment down below subscribe and i will catch you all in the next video so take care everybody bye bye